Welcome back. In this video, we're going to show you how to use the Polar's JSON normalize function. Now, this function was released in Polar's version 1.0, so if you don't have that version or a more recent version installed on your computer, you'll definitely need to upgrade that first in order to use it. With that said, let's give a brief introduction into what JSON normalize does and how it's different from other JSON functions you might see in Polar's. JSON normalize is not technically considered an I.O. function. That's because you are not directly reading JSON data into a data frame when you use it. Instead, you first need to read your JSON file or JSON string into a Python dictionary using the built-in JSON library. That said, I unofficially consider JSON normalize an input function because you utilize it almost immediately after the data is read into Python. Now, the primary purpose of JSON normalize is to transform JSON data by flattening it into a tabular format. This comes in handy in a number of circumstances, including when you need to read local non-normalized JSON files or when receiving nested JSON data from an API. You'll notice that I use non-normalized and nested interchangeably. You can also utilize normalized and flat interchangeably. When your JSON data is in a flat non-nested format, you can use other functions like readJSON and scanJSON. But these functions are absolutely useless if your data is not normalized. With that said, let's dive into implementing the JSON normalize function. Okay, so we're going to start by importing JSON. And we got to import polars as PL. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just run that. So now we have our library in here, and that'll now enable us to get some help when we're kind of typing out some of these functions. Uh, next step, we're going to import our data. So we have this electric vehicles JSON file that we're going to use. I won't open it because it's rather large and it might take a lot of memory. So we're going to go ahead now and just upload that or load that into Python dictionary. So we're going to say f is equal to open. And then we're going to type the path to our data set. And one thing that you can do is just drag it and then hold the shift key and that should put it in there. Do need to close it in some quotes there. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is just make it so that we are reading this file using that R uh, character there. Okay, next step, I'm gonna type data and set it equal to json.load. And so this is where we're gonna load our JSON file, make it a Python dictionary. And that is how we're going to get that initial dictionary in. And then we're going to go ahead and import, or excuse me, we're going to go ahead and now use the function. So we're going to type pl.json normalize. And then we just need to pass our data in here. And so by default, Polars is going to be strict about how it constructs the data frame, meaning that it won't allow for mixed data types. And I already know that this data that we're working with has some mixed data types. So I'm going to go ahead and set another parameter in here. That is the strict parameter. I'm going to set that equal to false. And we're going to go ahead and address the mixed data types a little bit later. Let's go ahead and display our data here. I'm going to go ahead and type df and then just select the top five by typing the head method. And when we run that, we get a new data frame that's been flattened. Now, I want to draw some comparisons to pandas, which had the original JSON normalized function. So let's also, in this next cell, let's actually open up a new cell here and type import pandas as PD. Whoops, there we go. Import pandas as PD, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I can actually just copy and paste, well, actually probably both of these lines here Put them in down here and now the function is a little bit different the pandas function does not have a strict parameter and we don't need to worry about that in pandas because it doesn't worry about mixed data types so we're going to go ahead now that we have this and actually we need to change this guy here to pd and then we're going to run the cell okay so we have the exact same data frame, essentially. There are some visual differences here. You can see we've got the actual data type on the polar side. We do have this information 
as well in pandas, but it's just not displayed visually in the actual data frame, as you can tell. So in both of these, you should notice that most columns contain long names with items separated by periods. This is a result of flattening the JSON structure. And what you're seeing are essentially the paths to each of these values that it's grabbed here. So in this case, you know, we can see meta.view.id. That is the path that led us to this flat structure that gave us this value. And you'll also notice that there are some values that contain nested items. And this is because both functions only normalize the key value pairs. If a value is an array or a list, then it's placed into the data frame as a list. So you'll see that here in both instances. We can access these values and even create separate data frames based on the contents. In pandas, you simply need to use the record path argument. And so let's demonstrate that now. So down here in this next section, we're going to demonstrate that. And we're actually going to go ahead and copy the same data as before, just to make it a little bit easier. And then what we're gonna do now is pass the record path variable, excuse me, record path parameter. And then we're going to pass a list that's going to walk us to the path that we're seeking. So let's take, for example, there is a meta column. So we're gonna type meta, and we're gonna get the column names out of this path that we're typing here. So we're gonna type meta, view, and then columns. Okay, now that we have this, we can go ahead and run it. So now we essentially have a new data frame based on the record path that we passed. And like I was mentioning before, this was previously a list with some nested information, which we've basically unpacked now with this record path argument. We can get the same information in pullers, but we don't have a record path argument. Instead, we'll need to index the object directly. So let's go ahead and we're gonna grab our example from pullers, bring that back down here. And so in this case, we're going to actually just index off of here. So we're gonna say meta, and then we gotta keep indexing. So we'll say view, some more straight brackets, and then columns. Okay, now if we run this, we should get the exact same data frame, which you can see in the output, we do have the exact same information. So we've created a new data frame for column headers but what about the actual data? If you recall, we found this information in the first column. Let's try unpacking that now. We'll do the exact same thing as before. This time we're going to pass data as the record path. So let's go ahead and show it for both pandas and polars. I'm gonna just copy and paste. And then I'm going to change this to data. And let's go ahead and run this. And now we get our data neatly displayed. You'll notice that column headers are missing and we could potentially add them in based on the column headers data frame we got earlier, but let's demonstrate how to do this same exact thing in pullers. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll back up here. I'm gonna copy our pullers example. And so I'm going to index this time off of the data once again, and let's go ahead and run this. And in the output, we get a weird mess. Now, I actually spoke with the Polar's developers on this, and they said it was because of the mixed data types that are happening in this portion of the file. At the time of this recording, the function is very new, so perhaps some changes will be made to remedy this, but they did give me a solution that appears to work just fine, and we're gonna walk through that now. So we're going to come into this next cell, and we're going to type df, set it equal to pl.dataframe, and then we're going to pass our index data once more. So we're gonna say data and then pass the data index. And you'll notice that we're not even using the JSON normalize function right now, um, but bear with me here. We're gonna kind of demonstrate how it works a little bit more. We're gonna say orient and then we're gonna say we want to orient it in a row fashion. Okay, so I'm gonna call df and do the first five rows by typing the head method. And let's go ahead and run that. And now you can see that we actually have the data that we were looking for. And so definitely 
a little bit weird, a little bit different. Um, again, I, I hope that maybe some changes are made to the JSON normalize function that will maybe help with some of those weird situations that we ran into, um, but it works. And that's the important part here. And now you know how to do it. With that, we'll end the video here. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll catch up with you at the next one.